But why are you doing this? I don't know. I mean, I've been kind of asking myself that for the last, like, two months of training. Um, I think it's, it's also building a stronger relationship and confidence with myself. Um, I don't know, it's many different things all like at once and it's it's like it's kind of hard to put into words it's it's like a I don't know, it's like real like I feel kind of alive because it's so like it's real and unknown and you know they say like the greatest fear is the fear of the unknown it's definitely, definitely true. For as long as I can remember, I've been curious about the true meaning of life. Why am I here? What am I supposed to be doing here? Is there more to life than what we see when we open our eyes and go about our day? The underlying theme of those questions have shaped my entire journey through this life. That theme I believe to be is what lies beyond what we have come to perceive and accept as normal. Seeking the answers to these questions, I have attended meditation retreats, sought out healers, shamans, and gurus, traveled through the Middle East and Europe, and read just about every book you can read on the subject of spirituality, meditation, and self-motivation each time ending up with the same unanswered questions. This journey, like most great journeys, began in the most unlikely of places and when it was least expected. So what's Auburn like? And what, in your own words, what's it like to live here? Um, I mean, it's, it's, I think it's a real small town. Like a lot of towns try to be that way, but here it's like really, um, nothing's fake about it. It's super like you, anytime you go out, you see like three people you know. Um, and and I, I don't know, like of all the places I've been in my life and like I've done all that like Europe traveling and stuff, like I've always wanted to come back here. Ironically, my greatest spiritual lesson of all came not from sitting for hours in meditation, but for training for an ultra marathon in the heart of winter with just a little over a month to prepare. So the, <clears throat> the whole process really began um, abruptly and out of nowhere. Um, you know, I was hanging around the, the training studio and the, the race got, got brought up and people were talking about it. And, um, you know, someone had mentioned that there was still room available in the, the 50K and I had tried to sign up for just the half marathon distance because that's something that I had done in the past and, and you know, would, knew how to, to train for something like that. Uh, let's see, I've been doing marathons since 2009, so I've been doing marathons for about eight years. And I think with the marathon, I put so much pressure on myself. My whole goal was uh, to qualify for the Boston, so it was basically a pass or a fail. Even my first marathon, I was so focused on qualifying for the Boston that I unfortunately I wasn't really didn't allow myself to actually enjoy um, the process which was training so I think with trail running I went out there understanding that it was going to be difficult it was a whole nother beast and I think you almost it humbles you and you kind of just go out there and just give it your best understanding that unlike a road run there's a lot of other factors that are going to come up you know so I like the adventure aspect of I think just being outdoors you know um, being on a treadmill, running on the road, it's really not something that, you know, gets me excited compared to, you know, just the trail system. I mean, everything that you need to learn in life, you can learn through running. You know, I mean, you're going to have times out there where, where you feel like there's just no way you can keep moving, uh, where your mind and your body and, and everything else is saying, you know, what are you doing? <laughs> like, uh, it's time 
it's time to stop. And you just got to find a way to push through it. And then you have times where you're just, you've got the, the best high of highs because you're, you're rolling and you feel good and everything in the world is right. And so there's just so many lessons that you learn through the sport of running that, that you wouldn't get uh, anywhere else. And uh, you find out a lot about yourself. You really do. You find out, you know, number one, where you're at, how far you can come. And, I, and I've seen that every year, just the improvement that I've had just in, in, in the world of running. And then you find out what you're made of. And, you know, you find out that you're a lot tougher mentally than you think you are. Yeah. Kind of like what people dread about most things. Oh, as I say, our sport is your sport's punishment. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Same. High school is like, I don't really. I mean, I did track, but it was sort of mediocre running over hurdles. But, yeah, I didn't really want to run, not for the sake of running. Yeah. But. No, so I, I think it's really nice and refreshing to hear, like, at the top level with this distance is that mm -hmm. it's just, it's not like these crazy, like, insane humans. It's just, like, normal people yeah. who have found a love and, and yeah. passion in the sport. And, and you, can, you can do a little um, research on, um, I'm trying to think of what it is, but there's a, an actual affinity that we have as human beings with dirt. And not, I mean, some of it is the trail running, our feet hitting the trails, but even our hands touching dirt does it as a, like a physiological um, and psychological um, benefit to it. So I think that that's a big part of it is being out in nature. It's, it's a need. Yeah. Like being outdoors. Yeah, isn't that weird? I mean, it's like even just going hiking up in the mountains, you just, it's like we, we call it beauty. And I, I wonder why. I don't know. It, it does something, yeah. it, you know. It, and it is—it's breathtaking, and, um, except for the desert. I don't really like the desert. Yeah, the desert. No. <laughs> no, no. I started uh, running when I just uh, got into college, not as a competitive runner necessarily. Just kind of learned it as uh, something that you do when you, you know, you're looking for, uh, you know, an alternate uh, exercise. You've done all the team sports when you're in high school and all that. And then you get, get to college and you're not good enough to make anything. So it's like, well, now what am I going to do? So running seemed to be taken off a little bit then. And I got exposed to some ultra running people almost like right off the bat when I was uh, just 19. And so once I saw those guys and I saw the event, then I, for whatever reason, I just kind of locked into that was something that I was going to get involved in down the road and I just slowly worked my way into doing trail running and then into ultra running um, as a combination pretty much. So ultra running by definition is anything over 26.2 miles or anything over a marathon and that's just the strict definition of it. My, my interpretation um, of the definition is it's pushing your your body to the breaking point and going past that so much for me of my running needs to be done before the sun comes up i need to get a run in and a workout in and be home before seven so for me I think my running experiences are quite different because a lot of them are done before dawn. And there's something about being out in just the inky blackness. Um, there is such a beauty in that. There's, it's like stolen moments. The rest of the world is fast asleep. And I'm kind of jealous of that. <laughs> I miss sleep too. But there, the rest of the world is fast asleep, and I'm getting these moments to just be filled up to go into my day. It's never easy when the alarm clock goes off. It's never easy to be in my kitchen sipping tea, watching the rain pouring down outside, knowing, oh, I have to go out in that. There is something that just transforms inside of you when you actually step out on the trail and it's the crickets chirping, it's you know the breeze blowing in your face, it's the stars, it's the moon, it's just phenomenal. And there is such a deep peace. It's sort of like the whole world is just rejoicing that a new day is about to begin. And it reminds me a lot of when my children were infants, were teeny tiny. And of course, waking up in the middle of the night to feed your babies is always a little bit tedious. But I can remember opening the windows and hearing the crickets and feeding my babies and it was sort of like these stolen moments that were just gifts where it was just the two of you and the rest of the world was asleep and it was just such um, 
just such an intimate time, you know, just like such a special sweet bonding time. Running in the early hours reminds me a lot of that, of just I'm grabbing these moments and yes, sure, I'd rather be asleep, but I'm pulling out something that's so much richer um, than sleep would bring right now. And it's gonna be better for everybody because I've done it. Um, and it sort of propels you into wanting to see what else you can do, you know, what more you can do. So I hammered out a quick six today. Let's push it to eight tomorrow because I want to hang on to that. And it never fails that throughout the day I'll look back on those moments as the highlight of my day. So, so in the actual training details, the we started training January 2nd and the, the race was on February 18th. So we had to boil down a lot of training miles in a short amount of time. Uh, the first week we actually ended up totaling 30 miles. Um, and, and you know, by the end of that, my legs were so sore that I had to use like an office chair, kind of like a wheelchair around the house uh, to get around and, and do actual work. Um, progressively what, what ended up happening is I had to veer off of the, you know, we started with a meticulous training schedule that was based off of, you know, the the 12 month 50k training plan. And what what we realized was, you know, this this isn't going to work for me in this short amount of time and I'm going to kill myself if I try to follow this plan. So what ultimately ended up happening was I just started listening to my body. So once I, I gained more wisdom and, and tutelage from the experienced ultra runners and I, you know, I did four weeks of strict training, I, I then knew kind of what to expect a little bit and what my body was going to go through. And, and I started to kind of listen more to my body than to the plan. And so, you know, I would really start doing training based off how I felt. I would wake up in the morning and, and think, okay, my legs are fresh today. I can get my long run in and go out and do 14 miles. And then, you know, the next day wake up and, and not be able to move and say, okay, well, I'm going to get a little bit of recovery miles in, you know, three miles. And, and that's kind of how it ended up progressing all the way into the end. And, you know, Brian was a great coach because he rolled with that. He, he didn't say, you know, oh, push it and you need to stick to this schedule and, and these miles. It was, okay, yeah, listen to your body. Do what feels right for you. I don't know, I've noticed is like having a sense of humor. I feel like that's like a huge, huge strength just being a trail runner because shit's going to happen, you know. Something stupid is going to You're going to eat shit. It's going to be too hot. Something's going to happen, right? I mean. Sure. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Did any of us take yeah. ourselves very seriously? Yeah, it's it's fun. It's um, it's it's authentic and robust. Yeah, which is a good um, it's a it's it's a good measure for what you should do on a daily basis, right? Is what I'm about to do is it robust? Is it going to make your heart pump? Or is it going to be good work? And is it authentic, you know? And I think running on trails long distances is, is as authentic as running can be.